Tech friends, how you doing? Liam here with a fresh news tip for you. Valve has released SteamOS 3.3.2 along with a big stable client update as well. Both of these are out for everyone in the stable channel now. This brings together all of the recent beta and preview updates and there's quite a lot of changes to be aware of. Firstly, for those who didn't get the memo, Valve has changed the folder where you put your custom boot and suspend animations, which is now of course supported for everyone since it's in the stable release. So here's where to find it now. So in desktop mode, load up the file manager into your home and then unhide the contents with all the folders and files that have a dot at the start of their name. Now go to dot steam root config. In here, you need to make a UI overrides folder and then inside there, a movies folder. Now you can just drop your custom boot and suspend animations in here. But if for whatever reason you don't have a dot steam folder, it's also found in dot local share steam. They both go to the same place. As for what else is new, it is a long list. Docked mode, especially when you're using external monitors, saw a huge amount of improvements like external display output resolution and refresh rate selection in display settings, although that will only appear when you are connected to an external monitor. The deck will now also automatically avoid problematic resolutions and 30Hz modes on external displays as they attempt to prevent various black screen issues and you just getting stuck. Also added is an automatic toggle just to let the deck control the display resolution. And the deck will actually keep track of refresh rate and FPS limit settings between internal and external displays. So it's different between handheld and docked mode now. This is something that I showed in a previous video, so I'm just going to rehash it for you here where it's set to 40 hertz when I'm in handheld mode that you can clearly see. And then I'd switch straight over to an external monitor I'm capturing where it jumps to 60 hertz. And there's now no way to change the refresh rate for external displays as it was removed. However, you can turn that back on in the developer options menu. The reason being they are once again trying to prevent black screens and situations where you just get completely stuck and cannot do anything. They also fixed up a lot of issues that I've seen people complaining about in the comments. They've improved external display hot plug detection, fixed in-game camera control issues when you're using a mouse, they've fixed aspect ratio and resolution not properly switching in the Steam UI after reconnecting an external monitor. They've also fixed an issue where frames could drop on external displays at lower refresh rates. Red Dead Redemption 2 should finally work properly because there was a graphics driver update, so you won't see it crashing all of the time now. Frame pacing was improved when compositing, such as when FSR is turned on. Controller firmware should not try to update itself on every boot, so it will now be faster and not seemingly take forever. SD card formatting should be a lot better as well. An issue where small touches would be ignored on the edges of some trackpads was solved. Random haptic events should no longer happen. And the boot tone volume should be equalized across all models. The list of changes just keeps going on. There's performance improvements when rendering the home screen. Chat text boxes are now auto-focused when opening the chat tab. Some cases where cloud sync would be attempted while offline was solved. There's an issue fixed with startup haptics. And then there's loads and loads of changes when it comes to Steam input. Like controller configurations now automatically switch to be per device when multiple of the same controller are connected at once. Virtual menu previews in the configurator now highlight the appropriate button when navigating to its associated command in the command list. They've reduced the occurrence of double activations on soft press and touchpads and sticks. Then there's just a load of bug fixes to Steam Input, so overall it should just work better. There were some annoying crash bugs fixed as well. Steam Input's flickstick mode also saw some major improvements just to make it work better. 
And for those that don't know, flick stick is the special mode that you can use along with the gyro for first person shooters. It's supposed to enable you to have better aiming basically and enable you to quickly flick to a different direction. So this is the absolute biggest update to the Steam Deck and Steam OS that we've had for a while. As always, a link to the changelog will be in the description. Let me know what you think about this update in the comments. Let me know what you're waiting on them fixing up next or adding. And I'll see you in the next video.